personal note, acknowledge my pride and heritage, and to point out that the values that drive me personally and that I work with my peers and partners, volunteers, staff, and participants at the Social Development Center are values that are similar to what we see as traditional uh, Indigenous values and that our main responsibility is to take care of each other and to take care of Mother Earth. And if we can help focus there, then we will do good things. because we believe in equity and fairness. We want a legacy for the future. We're driven and based on compassion because we do care and we care about our fellow people. And we want a community of voices. If we can continue to be that as our foundation, we will move forward and for the next 50 years. Talk about issues from a people perspective. There really isn't much of that going on, too. And uh, walls full of stickies. I don't know how many different kitchen and table talks we did. I just loved the name. It stuck. And um, it was really hearing what people thought about the community and what they felt the community needed. So it wasn't um, somebody on a high looking over to see what needed to be put in place, but the people. contacted by the uh, Attorney General's office. They were offering to do human rights workshops. And was, the event itself was, um, I think uh, it was well attended and I think was useful, but what also came out of it was that Trudy's very thorough and she wanted to do a follow-up. So, uh, so she, she did a follow-up with people from who had attended that day who were willing to, to do so and uh, and out of that for social planning council came the uh, disabilities and human rights it, it was a group as I say originally of, of, of older leaders but we kept uh, meeting and wanting to meet <laughs> and uh, eventually today that's the disability and human rights group what's unique about the about this agency has to do with who they bring in Okay, to say, you know, everyone welcome, you see it everywhere, but it's not, yeah, you're welcome conditionally. Well, no, that's not the condi that's not how it is here. You know, it sometimes makes things a little difficult because you got, you know, different disabilities in a room. It's been a challenge to accommodate everybody, and sometimes we fail. But this is the one place that I know does that. And what is the value to the outside is we get those voices and can communicate that back to places like the region, the cities. So that, that method of enabling community voices to come to the fore was something that stood out for me then and continues to stand out. When policymakers are making decisions um, that are for the benefit of community, they're absolutely, their hearts are in the right place. But uh, an organization that has, um, is working directly with the people who the, those policymakers are trying to serve um, has a place in making those decisions. I really like the way they recognize everybody uh, of all walks of life and that they strive very hard to hear voices that don't always get heard. Everybody understands what a, what a Chamber of Commerce does, what a Tourism Bureau does, uh, what a Volunteer Bureau does. Social Planning Council, Research Development Centers and Arts Council are similar but they're not as well understood and they're not supported the way they could be or should be perceived as 
a fundamental uh, a part of the civic infrastructure of communities. In some ways, our communities need these organizations more than they ever did. There's a couple things I want to do now. The first question we're going to put out on your table is what kind of community do we want?